Welcome back to the channel. I'm EZP40. Today we are going over mobility and Black Ops 3 Zombies. Here's a table of contents if you're looking for a specific weapon class. Usually when talking about the mobility of a weapon, the first thing that you'll usually think of is the weapon class. Assault rifles, light machine guns, submachine guns, shotguns, all that kind of stuff. Based off of the class, you need a pretty good idea of the mobility of the weapon. While that's the case for most weapons, there are some exceptions, especially considering that in traditional zombie games, um, they're all slightly different from one another when it comes to mobility. It's a little more complex than I originally thought it would be. A big factor is that when you upgrade a weapon, sometimes it will have an upgrade in mobility. However, for Black Ops 3, pack punching a weapon does not give off any extra benefits of mobility. If you look at Wikipedia and look at the stats on Wikipedia for mobility, it'll say that some weapons are high mobility, moderate mobility, and low mobility. First off, I want to start by saying this. High mobility is 100% mobility. 100% mobility is what we're looking at. That is what you'll usually find in lighter weapons. 95% mobility is a moderate mobility. That's what you'll usually find in the middle tier weapons, weapons that aren't too big or too small. It's the standard average mobility. Then you have 90%, which is considered low mobility. You will usually find 90% mobility in big guns. After about seven weeks of researching mobility in Black Ops 3, I can say with full confidence, pack-a-punching a weapon in Black Ops 3 Zombies grants you no mobility boost at all. Not a single weapon in the game will give you a boost in mobility if you pack punch it. Submachine guns. Submachine guns, for the most part, are pretty much identical in BO3. Um, it's the light weapon class, so it's expected to have 100% mobility. However, in some cases, it'll actually be even higher than 100% mobility. However, in Black Ops 3, all of the SMGs have 100% mobility, except for one weapon. That's the bootlegger. The bootlegger is supposed to be kind of like the Type 100 from World at War, um, which is an SMG, um, so I don't know if they meant to make this somewhat of an assault rifle. Maybe I'm just marking this wrong and I, it's actually an assault rifle and I'm putting it in the SMG category, but it is more similar in mobility to an assault rifle than it is to an SMG. The mobility for the bootlegger is 95%. And just a heads up, pretty much every weapon in the game has a four second sprint duration. Um, so unless stated otherwise, it's very safe to assume that it's got a four second sprint duration. Assault rifles. Assault rifles are the most popular class of weapons in the entire game. It's the happy medium for weapons. And because of this, usually the mobility is set somewhere around 95%. And that is the case with Black Ops 3 Zombies. Every single assault rifle in the game in terms of mobility uh, is 95%. So regardless of which one you're using, whether it's unupgraded or pack punched, you'll move at essentially the exact same speed. LMGs. LMGs are usually a slow category since they're such big weapons uh, with lots of ammo. But in Black Ops 3, the mobility that they gave to the LMGs was actually quite generous. Um, something that you might hear across the community is the Dingo is similar to assault rifles when it comes to mobility. That is true, actually. But what people aren't saying is that it's actually the case for almost every single LMG in Black Ops 3 Zombies. Obviously the Dingo, but also including the BRM, the 48 Dredge, the Gorgon, and the RPK. All of those are 95% mobility. It's the, the exact same as the assault rifles. However, the one LMG that is different is the MG-08. The MG-08, it feels kind of like it's Black Ops 2 Caterport. It feels like the exact same thing. They just copied and pasted from Black Ops 2. And in Black Ops 2, it had a 90% mobility. And in this game, it also has a 90% mobility. The only difference between the Black Ops 2 MG-08 and the Black Ops 3 MG-08 is that in BO3, it doesn't have the ricochet effect when you upgrade it. Other than that, though, it does not get a boost compared to the Black Ops 2 MG-08. Snipers. If you go to Wikipedia, you'll see that snipers have a moderate mobility, aka a 95% mobility. But when you upgrade it, it turns into 100% mobility. Or in this case, they say high mobility, they mean 100%. However, that's not true. Regardless of what sniper you're using and whether it's upgraded or not, it is 95% mobile being the same again as the assault rifles and the LMGs other than the MG-08. Shotguns. You can expect to have full mobility when you're using shotguns in Black Ops 3, regardless of which one you're using. Uh, this includes the Banshee from Revelations, which some of you may not be familiar with the Banshee. 
This weapon is exclusive to Revelations. It is not really the same as the other shotguns. It's quite a bit different, but their mobility is the same in terms of having 100% mobility and having a four second sprint duration. Pistols. So pistols can get a bit interesting at times because they're usually fully mobile, but there are instances where it does go beyond the 100% mobility rating. In BO3, this is not the case. Every single one of them is 100% mobile except for one pistol. That is the Marshall 16 from Zetsubo Noshima. It is a little bit slower. It's at 95% mobility, which I don't know why it's like that, but whenever they made this, it was like that. I noticed this whenever I was playing ZNS one time and I was just running around testing mobilities. And when I had a razor back in my hand and then I had a, my marshals as my other weapon and I was running around with both of them, I noticed I was a bit faster with the razor back, which I thought was a bit weird. I thought maybe the razor back just has a, a mobility rating of over 100%. After testing though, and testing with other SMGs and other pistols and other weapons in general, I realized the marshals were similar to the assault rifles, the LMGs, and the snipers, because then I also got an assault rifle and it ended up being the same mobility as that. Launchers. Uh, tied with the MG08 at 90%, the XM53 and the L4 Siege are low on the mobility rating. Again, Wikipedia will say that you'll get a boost in mobility when you upgrade them. Not true. Not true at all. Whether you upgrade these or not, these are going to be 90% mobility. So now that I've kind of got the regular weapons out of the way, I'm going to go into stamina up. Overall, everything I've said so far is without stamina up. All the, the numbers that I've said. But with stamina up, um, it does play a major role in the change of mobility because... Every weapon so far has had a four second sprint duration with either a 90%, 95%, or 100% mobility rating. With stamina, all of that changes. The four second sprint duration is changed from obviously four seconds to 12 seconds in Black Ops 3. When it comes to overall mobility, your mobility will improve to 109%. I did a lot of testing on the exact number here. At first, I thought it was 107% mobility. Then I kind of moved on to maybe it's somewhere around the 110 mark. After a lot of precise testing, I think 109% is the correct number. However, it was very, very close between this and 108%. So it maybe it's like 108.8%, but approximate numbers should be 109% mobility. That was the closest number I got to. So we're gonna say 109% mobility for the sake of just the approximate value and the number that it's closest to. So with stamina up, you are gonna have 109% mobility. You might be asking, what weapon is gonna have 109% mobility though? Like, like which ones? The answer is all of them. Every single weapon that you have in your inventory will be 109% mobility if you have stamina up regardless of what you're holding. You're gonna be holding a freaking building and you're gonna have 109% mobility. It doesn't really matter what weapon you're holding. You can have a, an SMG, you can have a, an LMG, an assault rifle, L, what does it, what, it doesn't matter at all what weapon you're carrying. It's 109% mobility and 12 second sprint duration, except there's a few other weapons that I'm gonna say up ahead that might be a little bit different in terms of sprint duration, but we'll go into that here in a second. Those are a little bit different than the regular weapons. Wonder weapons. Now, getting into Wonder Weapons, I did run tests with both the upgraded and unupgraded, obviously. Um, so whenever I did the staffs, whenever I did the bows, I did upgrade the staffs, and I obviously did the quest for the bows, and, and still ran tests for stuff like the Wrath of the Ancients, all that kind of stuff. Every Wonder Weapon has 100% mobility, except the Apothecan Servant. The Apothecan Servant has a 90% mobility rating regardless whether it's upgraded or not. So if you're playing Shadows of Evil or Revelations and you intend on training, it's probably not a good idea to train with the Apothecan Servant unless you have stamina, which will then boost your mobility to 109% and your sprint duration to 12 seconds. The Death Machine. The Death Machine's actually a bit weird because the Death Machine has the slowest mobility in Black Ops 3 Zombies. The mobility rating for the Death Machine is 80% and the sprint duration is only two seconds, which is really, really bad, but that's kind of expected with the death machine, obviously, with a, a big gun like that. However, if you have stamina up, this again moves to 109% mobility. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you're carrying. If you've got stamina up, you're gonna be 109% mobile. The sprint duration is gonna move from two seconds to six seconds. Special weapons. They are definitely different from anything I've already said so far. I will explain why. We're gonna start with the sword from Shadows of Evil. The sword is going to be 100% mobile with or without stamina. And the sprint duration is going to be six seconds. 
The Annihilator is going to be 100% mobile and it's going to have a four second sprint duration. The Ragnarok DG4 is going to have 109% mobility with a six second sprint duration. The Skull of Non Sapwa is going to be 100% mobile with a four second sprint duration. And last but not least, the Gauntlet of Siegfried, which it's a little bit funky. And let me explain why. <clears throat> if you have the dragon out, you are going to be 100% mobile with a four second sprint duration. If you launch the dragon and you just have your fist out, you are going to be 109% mobile with a six second sprint duration. It's a little weird, but that's just how it is. Now, with stamina up, obviously everything moves at 109% mobility, regardless if you have stamina up. But the sprint duration is where it gets a bit tricky. If you have a four second sprint duration, obviously that's going to move to 12 seconds. So things like the Annihilator, the Skull of Non Sapwa, and the Gauntlet of Siegfried with the Dragon Out, that moves to a 12 second sprint duration. However, for the Sword, for the Ragnaroks, and for the Gauntlet of Siegfried with just the Fist Out, that moves from a 6 second sprint duration to a 16 second sprint duration. Originally, I theorized that it would be 18 seconds because obviously, com you know, comparing to the other weapons and all that kind of stuff, comparing to that, <clears throat> it would make sense for it to just triple in its value. So I thought it would be 18 seconds. It just made sense. However, throughout all my tests, and I ran multiple, multiple tests on all these weapons, this was 16 seconds. Not sure why, but 16 seconds is what it is. Melee weapons. The melee weapons I'm referring to are the ones on Garad Krovi and Revelations. These melee weapons you can do uh, time trials to earn, and there's four on each map. All of them have a 100% mobility rating with a 6 second sprint duration, and if you have stamina up, it's 109% mobility rating with a 16 second sprint duration. Shields. So regardless of what shield that you have, you are going to be very slow with a shield. It's a 90% mobility rating with a 4 second sprint duration. But if you have stamina up, obviously that moves to 109% with a 12 seconds per duration. This includes the upgraded shield from a Garad Krovi. I ran both the unupgraded and the upgraded. So regardless of what shield you're running with, I wouldn't recommend it because it's going to be quite slow unless you have stamina up out, obviously. Now that I've gone over uh, mobility of every single weapon in the game, I am going to go into some other details regarding mobility. With mobility in Black Ops 3, Obviously, running around the map is important, but if you're going to run around the map, there's obviously better ways to go about it than just sprinting. I am, of course, referring to sliding. Sliding was introduced in Black Ops 3 Zombies, and it was a huge, huge addition. A lot of people, especially speedrunners, what they will do is they will slide jump across the map, and something good about sliding is that not only is it fast, but it doesn't use your sprint duration. So you can do it as much as you want, as long as you're just keeping up with that momentum. So if you're wondering how fast slide jumping would be, for a guesstimate, I would say, because I did test this a little bit, and it's not fully accurate, but it's very, very close to being accurate. I would say that slide jumping will make you about, uh, about 107% mobile compared to your base mobility. But if you've got stamina up, it's not going to really give you a boost when you're slide jumping. There's little to no difference, regardless of whether you do or do not have stamina up when you're slide jumping. Because the thing is, with slide jumping, um, it's actually going to let you recharge your sprint uh, duration whenever you're slide jumping. As long as you're not sprinting, your sprint duration is recharging. If you're wondering how that works, um, after a lot of testing, what I figured out was that for each second that you stop sprinting, it's actually going to recharge. So if you stop sprinting for one second, you're going to gain one second of sprint recharge back. So if you're slide jumping like crazy, because you don't have any sprint duration left, that's actually going to recharge. So when you're out of sprint duration, it's very good to just slide around the map. Something else I kind of want to talk about a little bit is uh, running up next to walls. If you're using walls and moving like right next to them, um, that will also make you a tiny bit faster. Not a lot faster, but it is very helpful whenever you're in tight scenarios. Walking up against a wall will make you walk about 8% faster. Running-wise, it didn't seem that much different, but maybe I was just testing this on a bad wall. That, was, that, that may have been my mistake, if that's the case, my bad. Anyways, that's about all I've got today in terms of mobility. This is pretty much all the research that I have found. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask in the comments. That's pretty much all I got for today. Anyways... I'll talk to you all later. See ya.